Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video we will be taking a look at what is DOM and how we can manipulate it using JavaScript by building a small to-do application. The application itself is very simple. It's a to-do application so a user will come and enter his or her task. Okay, for instance he or she writes task 1 okay and after that they will be clicking on the add button and after which their task will be updated in the DOM. If they want this task to be removed from the DOM, then they can simply click on the remove button and their task will be gone from the DOM. With that said, let's understand what is DOM. DOM stands for Document Object Model and it, and it is an API that is loaded by the browser to represent the HTML code present on a web page as a tree of object or node tree. Okay. Uh, each node or object in this tree is an HTML element that can be added, updated or deleted dynamically by using a scripting language such as JavaScript. The DOM is also object oriented in nature. That means each node of in present in DOM has, has its own properties and methods due to which it's very easy to manipulate. To understand the structure of DOM better, here, look at the image over here. As you can see here, the, the top level of this hierarchy contains the window object. This window object is given by the browser itself. Inside this window object, we have another sub object which is known as document. Inside this document, we have a root element which you can refer to as the HTML tag of your mark. Okay. Uh, inside this HTML tag, we have two sub nodes that are the head node and the body node. Inside the head node, we have the meta tag, the title tag and the link tag. Now the body node is divided into two sub nodes that are the div node and the script node. The div node is again classified into four sub nodes, the image node, h1 node, p node and the div node. Now here, the h1 node is divided in a is divided into a sub into a text node that contains the data hello in it. So that's all for the basic introduction of DOM. Now let's actually code the, the application which I have shown you earlier in the video. For coding this application, I am using Visual Studio Code as my editor. If you want to use any other code editors, then you can use them too. Okay. If you are also using Visual Studio Code, then there is a great plugin in Visual Studio Code that is the live server plugin. Uh, now what this plugin allows us is that it, it allows the live reload feature for static and dynamic pages. Okay. So go ahead and install this plugin. It's by Ritwik Tech. Now let's understand the logic behind our application. Okay. First of all, let me open the completed file. Uh, okay, and now let me open the dev tools. So now what this application does is that it takes the task of from the user. Okay, so for instance, suppose a user writes task one. Now, as soon as a as the user click or clicks on the add button. This, this task one is taken from the input box and is, it is being injected to the DOM dynamically using JavaScript. Okay. Uh, and at the position where this, con the, where the content of this uh, input tag is being injected is there, is inside the container. Okay. Now, as you can see here, as soon as I clicked on the add button, a div with class item container was being injected to the DOM. Okay. And if you want to see the content inside the item container, then there, as you can see, there are two divs inside this container. The first one has a class of item one and it contains the text or the task with the user enter. The second one has a class of item two and it contains a button that is the remove button. Okay. Now let's add another task. As you can see here, as soon as I clicked on the uh, add button, another node was being injected to the DOM. Okay. Let's add another one. Okay. So how does the remove button works? Okay. So it's quite simple. As soon as I click, as soon as I will click on the remove button, 
then the node which was injected previously is being removed from the DOM. Okay, I'll see it again. As soon as I clicked on the remove button, then the div, then that div was being removed from the DOM. Okay, so now let's start coding our application. Okay. First of all, we will create uh, the HTML file. Okay. So in VS Code, we can generate a boilerplate HTML by using an exclamation mark. Okay. Uh, so now let's give the HTML page a title of to do application and now create. Now let's create the static HTML. Okay, now this includes a header with a class of header and inside it we have a h2 which should say something like to do application. Okay, now let's create a wrapper uh, and inside it we will have a class of, we will have a form with class of form we don't need an action in this form okay now we will create a input tag okay the type of it should be text and it should have a class of input and it also should have a placeholder which should say something like enter your task And I want this to auto focus. Now we will create a button with type is type equals to button and the class of button add and it should say something like add. Okay, so this is the boilerplate HTML or the static HTML for our application. Okay, if you want to have a look at it, then we can open the live server. And let me close this tab. And as you can see here, this is the boilerplate or the static HTML for our for our application. Okay. So with the static HTML for our application done, let's move towards the styling of our application. Okay. So let's first of all create the style file, and let's uh, let's include it into our application. So now let's style, let's start the styling. First of all, we will select the global selector, and we will remove all the margin and the padding. We also give it a box sizing of border box. Okay. So now let's select the HTML and the body. The their display should be of flex, and the content should. Uh, should be at center horizontally and from vertically okay uh, they should have a hundred percent height and the flex flow should be of column and I want it to wrap okay and let's give it a font family of Apple system uh, so now let's select the style the header uh, the header should have a background color of um, uh, this one 44 b 70 okay uh, it should also have a height of 80 pixels and i want its position to be fixed Okay, uh, it should stay at stop and the Z index of this should be 1 so that it always displays on top of other elements. Okay, uh, its width should be 100% and a padding of 0 pixels from the top and bottom and 10 pixels from left and right. Now let's style the H2 present inside this head. It should have a color of white and the font weight should be 400. Okay, 
this uh, it should also have a height of 100% and its display type should be flex and the content should be vertically aligned to center ok uh, now let's style the form ok the form should have a display of flex and the flex flow should be row and it should wrap ok now uh, it should also have a margin bottom of 10 pixels ok uh, so now let's style the button it has a class of add ok so button add now it shouldn't have any border background color background color should be same as that of header ok the color of text should be white and uh, let's give it the cursor pointer property font size should be 25 pixels and text transform to uppercase oh, okay and let's remove the border yes. so, okay now let's style the input okay so the input should have a border of 1.16 solid and it should be of f4 f3 ok and the padding should be of 15 pixel and font size um, of 25 pixels ok and let's remove water radius from this tool it is ok now let's have a look and ok so this oh uh, we didn't specify the width for our button ok so let's specify it button add its width should be 100 pixels ok so yeah now it looks great uh, so while we are still in the styling phase for our application Let's also create the uh, styles for those HTML elements which which are going to be inserted by JavaScript. Okay, so the first class should be of item container, and uh, I want it to have a border radius of uh, 1.5 1.6 pixels. Uh, solid, and its color should be into into. Uh, and uh, what else uh, let's give it a border radius of 5 pixels um, and let's change its display to flex uh, let's uh, vertically align the elements to center and uh, let's horizontally center them uh, other than that uh, um, we can also do something like uh, uh, let's okay let's give it a padding of 18 pixel from top and bottom and 8 pixel from left and right let's give it a margin of 5 pixel from top and bottom and 10 pixel from left and right okay uh, and then uh, let's give it a background color of white okay so that's enough uh, let's now create another class that is the item one class which should have a width of 80 percent and then let's create another class and it should have a width of 20 percent okay 
Oh, one thing uh, we forgot to give the width to our item container. It should have a width of around I think 300 pixels. Okay, and uh, now let's create the styling for our remove button. It should have a class of button and uh, uh, the color of text inside it should be crimson. Uh, background color should be transparent. And uh, no borders. Uh, and uh, no border radius. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's enough for the H. That's enough for the CSS. So now let's create the JavaScript file for our application. Okay, so first of all, let's close this file and now let's include it over here. Okay, so now let's create the file and let's save it and close it. Uh, before uh, diving into the code uh, for this application. Uh, let me firstly introduce you to some of the DOM methods which we are going to use in this application. Okay, the first method which we are going to use is the create element method. Okay, so uh, what the create element method does is that it creates a HTML element for us. Okay, uh, if you want to have a look at it, then it's something like this. And then in the strings, we pass the HTML element which we want to create. So, for instance, let's create a div. Okay. And a div has. So, essentially, what this line does is that it creates a div element, something like this. And then stores this div element into the div variable, which you. into the div variable. Okay. Uh, now let's another let's use another method that is the create text node method okay uh, and it's something like that. what uh, now what this text node method does is that it uh, it generates a, it generates a text node for us okay which we can append or which we can insert to the HTML element which we created earlier that is this one okay so now let's uh, gee, let's give it a message like hello how are you okay so if I uh, save this and show you the DOM then as you can see here nothing is happening well, that's because we have only uh, created the elements here, uh, uh, until now. To actually make the, these elements present in the DOM, we have to use another method. That is the append child method. Okay. So what the append child method does is that it appends a, a child to a parent node. Okay. So let me quickly show you how that is done. Uh, we We'll do something like this document dot body. Uh, what this statement does is uh, is that we are me. What this statement means is that uh, we are sele we are selecting the HTML body tag. Okay, so essentially what this does is that it selects the body uh, tag with us for for us. Okay, and then in inside it we have the append child method. Okay, and now we have to give the child which we want to append. Okay, so let's append that div. And if we save and then now as you can see here, our div has been appended to the DOM. Okay, if we want to append this text node to our uh, to our if we want this text node to be shown to our uh, HT uh, to our DOM, uh, then we have to firstly append this node to the div and then append the div to the body okay so let me show you how that is done we will use div dot append child and now we will pass the text node okay text node hit save and as you can see here this is the text node hello how are you okay now one more thing 
this append child method is available on all the DOM nodes. DOM nodes. We can use it within the document dot body, or we can use it inside the uh, div, div inside the HTML elements which we create in the JavaScript. Okay. Uh, one more method which we have is the class list is the class list method. Okay. So what the class list method does is that it returns the it returns all the classes which an HTML element has. More, more on that is uh, well, it's more. It can do more than that. It can also add classes to a HTML element, and it can also remove classes from an HTML element. Okay. So if you want to have a look at it, then let me show you. Uh, it's something like this. Uh, first, the uh, let's add a class. To this, uh, to this div which we have created. Okay, so we will do something like this: div dot class list dot add. Um, uh, what should we, uh, okay? Uh, we let's give it a, the class of button. Okay, and now as you can see here, the button class has been inserted to it. Okay, if you remember, this is the class of uh, the remove button. Okay, so let's add the this uh, green color button add class okay so it's button add and if we save then as you can see here the class has been added to this text okay so enough of this let's now actually uh, jump into the coding for our application okay so let's first of all create an a variable that is items okay so what this variable does is that it uh, it holds all the tasks which our user uh, which our user enters okay so now let's after this let's now create a container oops let's container document dot create element let's create a div and now let's give it a class so div now let's give this div a class of class name class list dot add container okay and now let's append this to the body uh, okay uh, so now let's create a function and this function name will be create elements and what this function does is that it it will uh, create the wrapper and uh, it will create the remove button and the text mode which a user will enter okay so it will take a parameter item and inside the function body let's write the function one more thing i am using arrow functions okay so, uh, arrow functions are quite new to javascript they were introduced in ecmascript 6 in 2015 okay so feel free to use normal functions if you like okay, let, uh, create, let's create a variable item container Okay, so let's click on document create element. We will be creating a div. Okay, so now let's item container. Let's add a class to it, and the class name will be item container. We have already cre created the CSS classes uh, earlier. Okay, now let's create the a text container. Document uh, dot create element we will be creating a div and now let's give this text container a class of item one. Okay, now let's create the class for our button container dot create element div and let's give it a class of uh, item. Okay. 
okay uh, so now let's create the task which the user will create, uh, enter to is equals to document dot create element no sorry it will be a text node create text node and the data for this will be inside the function parameter okay item dot name okay item dot name is within this uh, parameter okay this parameter is a object that contains the item name and a unique id for that task okay now let's append the uh, task to the task container now let's append to the task to the text container okay actually it should be text text container dot dot open child text okay cool uh, so now let's create the but the remove button okay uh, document dot create element button this will create a button for us and now let's have uh, add a class to this button button dot class list dot add and it will be having a class of begin okay uh, okay so now let's create uh, now let's give this uh, button uh, we will be giving this button another class that will be of material icons uh, I haven't included the material the material icon CDN uh, yet so let's include the CDN okay material icons CDN So now the material icon and to use the material icon we just have to give uh, the span the class of the icon which we want to use and inside it we have to uh, give the text okay let me show you an example this is how we use a material icon we give it a class of material icon and now let now the name of the icon okay so for instance it's delete okay so this is how we use a material icon in the html okay currently we are using it user we are creating the elements dynamically using javascript so we will be adding the material icon class uh, here in the button in this format okay so uh, now let's now append the text node button dot open child and we want to open and uh, we want to open the text node so let's give it a text node document dot create a text node and the name of the node will be delete delete is the name of the remove or the trash icon okay now uh, also now let's add a event listener to this button the name of this listener will be the will be click okay so as soon as someone clicks on this button we want to fire off an event we want to fire off an function okay this function name will be remove and it will take oops now remove event listener remove and this will take uh, will and this function will take a unique id uh, of that particular task okay item dot id okay so now now let's define the remove function okay
सो नाउ फर्स्ट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द लॉजिक बिहाइंड द रिमूव फंक्शन सो वट्स हैपनिंग इन द रिमूव फंक्शन इज दैट फर्स्टली वी आर रिमूविंग ऑल द एच टी एम एल दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द कंटेनर एलिमेंट विच वी हैव क्रिएटेड अर्लियर ओके दिस वन वी आर रिमूविंग ऑल द एच टी एम एल दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड दिस कंटेनर एलिमेंट ओके सो हाउ टू वी डू दैट simply we just type container dot inner HTML equals to uh, an empty string. This will replace all the h. Uh, this will remove all the HTML that is inside the container. Okay. Uh, now after this we will generate a newly updated item array. Okay. We will update this item array. Currently, uh, okay. So let's update it. Items equals to items dot filter. आइटम आइटम डॉट आई डी नॉट इक्वल इक्वल टू आई डी नाउ वी विल मैप थ्रू दिस न्यू एरे ओके आइटम डॉट मैप एंड आइटम क्रिएट एलिमेंट्स ओप्स क्रिएट एलिमेंट्स एंड वी विल पास दिस आइटम okay so now with the remove functionality done now let's actually uh, create the add functionality okay so the add functionality is quite simple uh, first of all we will select the form okay document dot query selected a uh, form okay now for in uh, in the form we will add a event listener of submit okay oh, let's change the type of button here to submit okay so that this function so that this button actually submits this form okay uh okay so now let's fire a callback function inside this event first of all we will prevent the form to being submitted and that can be achieved by using the prevent default form method okay now here also we will remove all the html that is present inside the container okay and now we will uh, push the uh, the task which the user has uh, given inside this items object okay and this items array actually takes an uh, uh, actually is actually a array of objects okay each object has two keys first one is the is the task is the name of the task and the second one is the id of a task okay so let's do this items dot push push an object and the first key is name uh the name will be document dot query selector input oops input dot val okay so and the second one is the id uh so to generate a new id i am taking the date okay this will give me a unique id okay new date dot get i am taking the seconds okay now this now i think this is uh, it and if we save it and uh, okay and now let's run this task one and okay so this is not working because oh this is not working yet because we haven't inserted these html elements to the dom yet okay so we can do it simply by typing items dot map create elements and then okay first let kill item and then items dot create elements pass the item over here okay let me save it and now let's type task one add ok 
Okay, so the reason this is not working is that we haven't called this map function at the right place. Okay, we need to call it here. And one more thing, we haven't appended any child to the document yet. Okay, so let's append them. Okay, item container uh, dot append child. First of all, we will append the text container and uh, the the text container and the button container to the item container and now we will uh, append these to the container okay container dot open child item container save and now let's enter something task one add and now as you can see here the task one has been added but why is the uh, element okay oh so uh, that's because we uh, this is not working properly and this is happening because oh we didn't append the button to the button container okay button container dot open child button okay save and task one add and now as you can see here the task has been appended to the dog okay so, okay, so let's change the box border of these okay let me quickly change the border of these and that is the item container it should be something like um, i think i would like to give it an rgb format 000 and an opacity of 0 0.4 okay and now let's refresh it task 1 and Oh, I have my bad. Okay, uh, so yeah, now the border radius is coming to okay, and the border radius of this input box is too light. Let's change it also. Let's this well. Save and yeah, now. Uh, so I hope you guys uh, like this video. If you have any doubts, then please feel, please comment them, uh, and I will try to answer them uh, as soon as possible. Peace.